To continue our journey of color grading in Adobe Photoshop, today we're going to take a look at the color balance adjustment layer. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagine. I'm an award-winning photographer and Photoshop artist that specializes in fantasy composite art. So we're going to take a look at the color balance adjustment layer in Photoshop. This is the second tool that I go for when I'm doing any type of color grade in Photoshop, regardless of the genre of work. Anytime I need to be able to add color to the scene or fluctuate with the colors in the scene, the color balance adjustment layer is my second go-to. So we're gonna dive into Photoshop here in just a moment and get to the work and the learning, but but I do want to take a brief moment to say again, thank you so much. I reached the goal for this channel of reaching a thousand subscribers and now I'm sitting like a thousand plus 50 and it's it's a wonderful feeling. And I, I know to some folks it may be like, oh dude, you only got a thousand subscribers, whatever. I hope relatively soon I will have hundreds of thousands of subscribers and I hope that I will look back to today and feel that same enthusiasm and that same excitement because Education is important to me. Giving my knowledge back and sharing it with others is very important to me. But also, it's important to me to see other people continue their education, continue to tear away the limits that they place upon themselves and what they think is, is all that they can do, they can't do anymore. Break past that. The sky's the limit. Break past that and see what's on the other side of it. YouTube became a part of my educational journey when I was teaching myself Photoshop long ago when YouTube actually became a thing. But before YouTube, I was reading magazines and going to conferences and so forth and constantly trying to find information because Photoshop and photography and art was so important to me. And it still is today. And I'm expanding my horizons into other things. And I'm seeing folks of different disciplines, different industries during this world pandemic of COVID saying that they are limited, that they, they've aged out, that their usefulness has come to an end. And that is absolutely not true. Regardless of your age, there is so much you can do and there is so much to explore. And I highly encourage you to keep pushing forward. Whatever your passions are in industries that you explore, whether it is artwork and photography or something else, push through those fears, push through those limits, because those limits can be redefined. Reality is what you make it. So make it a good one. And with that, let's dive into the Photoshop and explore the color balance adjustment layer. So what we're going to do is create a color balance adjustment layer. We're going to do an overview of what the actual adjustment layer does, and then we're going to utilize it in two different ways. With this image, we're going to use it to do a pure color grade, where we're going to balance the colors into the image to create an artistic style that helps communicate the emotion and tell the story of this image. And then we're going to come to this image and use the color balance adjustment layer as a mechanism to balance the skin tones, because this image is in the middle of a touch and we can use that adjustment layer to balance out skin tones or other elements into the image to be able to complete the retouch itself so let's go back to our first image we're going to come to the adjustment window here that's in the layer stack click it and then we're going to come up to color balance it's going to make this color balance adjustment layer at the top of the layer stack and if you're new to photoshop adjustment layers simply are tools that tell photoshop how to interact with the layers beneath it so the color balance adjustment layer is just going to affect this background layer which is our image so in the properties window here this is the color balance adjustment layers controls and this is what we're going to talk about so here where it says tone if we click this drop down menu we have shadows midtones and highlights as options in this menu so essentially what we're doing is we're going to target a segment of luminosity when within this image this is similar to what we would do with like a curves adjustment layer but with that layer we're actually adding luminosity values to those areas of shadows midtones and highlights here we're just targeting that segment of luminosity within the image and then we're going to start balancing out some of the colors between it or being able to add color and fluctuate with it. So let's do a demonstration. Let's start with the shadows in this scene. So the Pantone color of the year is blue. So let's go ahead and add some blue to this scene. So I'm going to click this little triangle and start moving it to the right toward blue. And as you can see, instantaneously, we're creating a really cool, beautiful color stylized effect. So if you're new to Photoshop, for you folks, I want you to understand, just like in the previous video, with one adjustment layer, which is a common thing inside of Photoshop, and one control, we're able to create a beautiful artistic look to this image. 
So I want you to try to start demystifying in your own mind that Photoshop is a really complex program because it, it certainly is. But every step of the way, you're learning tools to be able to create the artwork that you seek. So in the previous video, when we talked about the selective color adjustment layer, we talked about the two different color spaces that Photoshop recognizes, which is CMYK, uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, or RGB, which is red, green, and blue. In this color balance adjustment layer, we obviously have control over cyan, magenta, and yellow, our uh, red, green, and blue. We're missing the black part of it, the black control, and that was really dealing with luminosity value. But in a way, it's kind of here in this menu, because again, we can target specific areas within the image to start creating those different effects. So here's how I suggest you start using this adjustment layer, because a lot of color grading, and I said this before, it, it's about experimentation. It's about looking at the image, understanding the story you're trying to communicate, knowing the color wheel. So looking at corresponding colors that complement, that contrast the triad of colors and so forth. This is a dramatically lit image. So I don't necessarily want to add a lot of bright, vibrant color because it goes against the nature of this dramatic story. This is photographed against gray seamless paper. So the color balance adjustment layer is going to show up quite a bit because the image is already a little bit darker. But because it's darker, that tells me I want to start with the shadows. And since it's a darker, more dramatic image, I want to start adding cooler colors like blue and we can add a little bit of red into the scene to start pushing it toward that maroon and purple. We can experiment and take the slider and slip it toward green. And if that's an effect or a color balance that looks good to you based upon what you're trying to achieve with the image, then go ahead and do it because that's the fun of the color balance adjustment layer. You have so much experimentation, but I've said it in previous videos. I say it when I teach all the time. Subtlety is key inside of Photoshop. So when you're using this very powerful tool of color balance adjustment layers, don't don't try to take it too far unless you are looking for a very hyper stylized look. Subtlety is key most of the time. So I'm going to take it away from the green. I'm going to push it back toward magenta just a little bit. And I'm just dealing with the shadows themselves. Let's switch to the highlights. You know, actually, for just a second, let's return these back to normal because I want to show you a couple more things of the controls of this before we move on. Let's go to the highlights because I want you to understand when it's targeting the luminosity segment and the image, it isn't just going to the strongest highlights that we see in this scene. So for instance, we can see here, she's got some pretty strong highlights on her cheek, on her forehead, her nose, her shoulder, and so forth. It isn't just going to specifically stick to those and look and not look anywhere else in the image, because even though we're on the highlights across the entire image, there are highlights everywhere in this segment of luminosity. So in the highlights, let's say I start adding some red to it. As I start taking it this way, we see it across pretty much the entire image. As we get to the extreme edge over here, it's a little bit dark, the light fell off during the photography, so we aren't seeing as much red there. If we wanted to add red to that segment, we would go to the shadows. But I wanted you to see that across the board, it is adding that color everywhere. It's strongest and starting at those areas where we see those highlights, but it is adding it everywhere. So that can help you kind of make decisions about where to start experimenting with the colors themselves. And just like luminosity values, when we're dealing with a curves adjustment layer during dodging and burning, when you come to midtones, Midtones is that balance between highlight and shadow. So it has a lot of range to play with where a lot of its effects will be visible. So if you're looking for just a subtle hint of color into the scene, I would suggest starting with the midtones because that's where you will see it the strongest because throughout this entire image, it is predominantly dominated by midtones. So again, let's start adding some blue to it. Let's add a little bit of the cyan and maybe a little bit of the green to get a different like teal feeling to the entire scene. The highlights aren't as powerful as we just saw when we were in the segment of highlights, but again, the midtones is infusing a lot of color. So often when I use a color balance adjustment layer for artistic color grading, I will spend more of the effort and effect in the midtones trying to find that good base of color. Then I will come to things like the shadows and infuse a little bit more color in certain areas and then go back to the highlights to potentially add some of that warm richness back to the scene. 
So the midtones, I was a little bit more heavy handed with the controls, but for the shadows and the highlights, I moved the points just a little bit because I'm trying to let the midtones speak the major color and then let the other elements of shadows and highlights have a little bit more of those elements of color. I'm going to delete this real quick and make another one because I want to demonstrate one final thing for you before we move on to the other image. Let's go ahead and let's go back to the shadows and I'm going to add a considerable amount of blue. Now again, this, in my opinion, this is too much, but if you're going for a very hyper stylized look, there you go, do it heavy handed, ignore subtlety. However, I think that's too much, but I want you to see something else that's in these controls and this is preserve luminosity. It should be checked when you make the color balance adjustment layer. This is essentially telling Photoshop to let the colors interact with the luminosity values to actually affect the luminosity values themselves. It's the equivalent of making a curves adjustment layer when we were doing dodging and burning and changing the blending mode of the adjustment layer here in the layer stack from normal down to luminosity. If we did that with a curves adjustment layer, it would tell Photoshop to ignore the color because it's just on a blending mode of luminosity. In this case, it's saying preserve luminosity with the color balance adjustment layer. So it's actually affecting the color. So if I uncheck this, instantaneously it returns back to the normal luminosity values that we saw in the original image without the color balance layer activated. So if you are looking for an even more subtle uh, addition of color into this scene and control, then that's a way to do it by using the color balance adjustment layer, just uncheck preserve luminosity. And it's also worth mentioning, you can make more than one color balance adjustment layer. So for instance, for the shadows, I can turn this one back on, I can decrease the blue a little bit, so we get that really dark tone of blue. So we can start speaking that story and those emotions within this scene. And then I can come and make another color balance adjustment layer. This time, uncheck preserve luminosity, come to the highlights and start adding some of those reds and those yellows. And they aren't going to be as vibrant and strong because they're not pushing into the color. So specifically in the highlights, those highlights here on her cheek and so forth, they're not going to blow out as fast with color because we have unchecked that box for preserve of luminosity. So final statement on this using color balance adjustment layers for color grading, you have to experiment. Make more than one and experiment and just understand the colors you're trying to work with. I said in the previous video, the color wheel is going to be your roadmap for color grading. It's going to be your way of being able to understand what colors to use, especially colors to use to help tell story and to evoke emotion. So visit a color wheel and kind of get a sense of what you're looking for in your image. All right, so let's move on to the second one. Again, we're in the middle of the retouch during frequency separation. So here in the layer stack, I'm going to add a color balance adjustment layer that is below the detail layer here, but above the color layers. And if you don't know what frequency separation is, you're new to the channel, then make sure to visit the videos above that will take you to the retouching series that'll give you a whole deep dive, starting with how to process an image in Adobe Camera Raw all the way through to this one. So you can start making your own images and retouching them. So let's zoom in just a little bit. When I was working on this image for the previous videos, um, essentially I looked at this and noticed that on this side, her right cheek, a little bit here at her upper lip and down by her chin, the skin tone colors are just off a little bit. And this isn't an issue of color correction. This is just probably indicative of the lights bouncing off of her makeup or a, a whole host of other reasons. And I need to balance out the colors. So I'm going to use a color balance adjustment layer. So. I said in the previous video that every human being, regardless of your ethnicity, has red, yellow, and orange in your skin tones. So what I want to do with this color balance adjustment layer is I'm going to check preserve luminosity so the colors will infuse and brighten the luminosity values within the image. I'm going to come to the highlights itself and I'm going to start there. And so I'm going to start pushing just a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red into the scene. Now, as I look at it and I move the sliders, my eyes are focused right here. And a little bit here. I'm ignoring everything else because if I looked over there, I would see the values are becoming too strong. It looks too oompa loompish over here and too vampire over here. So I'm only focusing on the area where I know I need to visually track as I make these adjustments. So now that I've done that for the highlights, I'm going to come down to the midtones and I'm going to give it just a little bit of a push of yellow. Again, subtlety is key, a little bit of rent. And then I'm going to come even to the shadows, even though there are probably not a lot of shadows in this section, as far as the segments of luminosity that can really be visible and we'll see the effect but it's still worth pushing just a little bit so i'm going to push just a little bit of yellow 
and a little bit of red into the scene. And now the wonderful thing with adjustment layers is that when you make them, they come with a layer mask. So right now it's a reveal all layer mask or a white layer mask. So while the layer mask is selected, if I click this icon, that square around it means that the actual controls of the color balance is what I'm going to manipulate. But if I click the layer mask, I'm going to hit control or command and the letter I for invert. This turns it now into a black mask or a hide all mask. So I can use my Wacom pen and start painting white onto this scene my flow is at 10 percent. that's pretty good and i'm just going to paint it right through here because this is where i want to see the actual effect of the color balance adjustment layer let's bring it up just a little bit more and smooth it out and i have balanced the skin tones between both of these cheeks between her forehead and other areas we see all of that let's zoom in just a little bit more and hopefully you'll be able to see this in the video i render these out in 1080p so it should be there so this is the after look at this area right through here this is the after and before. It's just a little bit cooler of a skin tone. After and before. So utilizing that color balance adjustment layer from a perspective of just retouching gives you a lot of controls when you understand those different segments. So let's have some final thoughts and we'll finish up the video for today. Color balance adjustment layers are my second preferred tool when I do any type of color grade inside of Photoshop, regardless of the genre or whatever artwork I'm creating, I like to use that tool because I love the ability to be able to balance out those colors based upon the luminosity segments. I've talked about my fundamentals of Photoshop, which is color, luminosity, and detail. And that color balance adjustment layer gives me control over two of them. And I can look at the image and also follow the lighting pattern from the photography. If I'm using light to be able to drive the audience's focus to a certain part of the image, I can augment that light, that storytelling with the colors using the color and balance adjustment layer and finding those different segments. So ultimately, as I said, experimentation, it's the key. It's the key to color grading. If there's ever a secret that I could give you about color grading, it's that you have to experiment. Because when you experiment, what you are doing is learning your own style. You're learning what speaks to you for your artwork as an artist. Yes, you're learning how to use these tools inside of Photoshop, but you're learning what is important to you as an artist, the colors that you like, the luminosity values. Do you like a matte look, a super contrasty look? Do you like harsh details in HDR? Do you like soft, shallow depth of field? You're learning these things about your style and learning the tools that can help you achieve it. If you like the content you found in the video today, then please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. New content debuts each week in photography and Photoshop education. I do appreciate the support so much. I appreciate you watching this video. If you do subscribe, make sure to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of that new content when you return to YouTube. Thank you for watching today, and until next time, I will see you out there in the world of Photoshop.